वेलकम बैक पार्ट टू ऑफ द सॉल्यूशन ऑफ फर्स्ट स्टेटिस्टिकल क्वालिटी कंट्रोल प्रॉब्लम एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग हाउ टू ड्रॉ मीन चार्ट एंड रेंज चार्ट इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द कंट्रोल लिमिट्स ऑफ अ मीन चार्ट एंड हाउ टू ड्रॉ अ मीन चार्ट हाउ टू ड्रॉ द कंक्लूजन एंड नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस हाउ टू ड्रॉ अ रेंज चार्ट फॉर द सेम प्रॉब्लम because we also have sample ranges for all the 10 samples and first step is again to calculate an xl bar not necessary for this but r bar and to calculate upper control limit first of all ucl the r in subscript shows that ucl upper control limit is for range chart and the formula is very simple again d4 r bar but what is d4 either the examiner should give the value of d4 and d3 for ucl and lcl respectively or you should have the required table okay again we know that the sample size for all the samples is 5 and for sample size 5 the value of d Four comes to two point one one five, and value of D three is zero. That will be considered while calculating LCL. But for UCL, D four is necessary. That is two point one one five for sample size five. Okay. So the upper control limit of range is D four R bar. That means two point one one five into six point eight. It comes to fourteen point three eight two. Let's round it off. Fourteen point four because for one millimeter we take the one decimal place, so it will be something like four decimal uh, four millimeters. Now central line, it is R bar only. That is six point eight, and lower control limit. we have already found both of these from the table for sample size 5 these two are dependent on sample size yes the formula for lower control limit for range chart is d3 into r bar and as we know that d3 is 0 0 into 6.8 will be 0 so lower control limit is 0 and since we know that range can never be negative just by observing the lower control limit we can say that it is not possible for any sample point to be below the lower control limit so now to prove the process not under control only one thing is possible if any one or more sample points are above the lcl but that we can say observe in the chart only not necessarily sometimes some paper setters may ask a question about drawing the conclusion without drawing a chart nothing say harder in that case just consider ucl and ncl and compare the sample points with these two if any sample value is greater than ucl then we can conclude that the process is out of control or process is not under control and if any sample value either in mean chart or range chart is less than the lower control limit then only then also we can conclude that the process is not under control only on the basis of getting such one sample point out of the upper or lower control limit we can draw the conclusion sometimes many paper setters prefer to ask all types of control charts in one main question but without drawing the chart they ask us to draw the conclusion we shall also discuss this point later on okay let's draw the control chart again it is very easy on the vertical axis we are going to take the sample range and on the horizontal axis we are going to take the sample number again we are going to pull we are going for pulling because the smallest value or smallest range is 5 so it is not necessary to write 1 2 3 4 
so we are going to pull it 5 and the highest value we need is 15 because upper control limit is as large as 14.4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. These are sample ranges. And here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These are sample numbers. Here it is not something like independent variable and dependent variable. No, these are just two relevant information, not the variables. Okay, first of all, central line 6.8. 6.8 can be somewhere here. Central line is always a continuous line. Upper control limit is 14.4, it may be here somewhere. And the lower control limit is 0. 0 is nothing. Horizontal axis itself becomes the lower control limit. And that's why it is not possible to have any sample point below the lower control limit. Particularly in case of range chart of this kind of zero lower control limit. Okay, now sample one, the range is seven. Plotting of the sample points. For sample two, the range is five. For sample three, the range is seven. For sample four, the range is nine. For sample 5, the range is 5. Range is 5. For sample number 6, the range is 8. Quite under control. The process seems to be quite under control. Uh, for sample number 7 also, it is 8. For sample number 8, it is 6. For sample number 9, it is again 7. There are too many samples with range of 7. Out of 10, it is the 5th sample. 1, 2, 3, no, it is 3. Oh, yes, these two are 8. Sorry. 1, 2, and 3. Okay. And 10. 6 again. Yes, as I have said earlier in my most of the earlier lectures, I can draw a sketch, only a sketch of the graph or chart. You please take utmost care while drawing the chart or graph on your graph paper. Yeah, accuracy is needed. This is just a sketch. Yeah, on board. Particularly, I am not able to draw the exact graph. You can take it as my own limitation, my personal limitation. Okay, now, the next step is observation. What is the goal of observation? Or what to observe? Just observe if any one or more sample points are either above the upper control limit or below the lower control limit. No sample point is above UCL or below LCL. That is our observation. No sample point is above upper control limit or below the lower control limit or you can write that all the sample points are between the upper control limit and lower control limit and on the basis of this observation what conclusion we can arrive at the process is under control see for the same problem we got 
exactly the opposite conclusion. In case of mean chart for this particular case, the conclusion was the process is not under control. And for the same data, for the same problem, the conclusion on the basis of range chart comes to the process is under control. It happens because both are the different statistics. According to the nature of the product, nature of the industry, which say control chart is suitable for arriving at conclusion. That is decided by the say consultants and both the concerned parties who are interested in drawing conclusion on the basis of all these analytical process. I hope this lecture proves to be very useful for you people to understand how to draw, how to calculate the control limits of R chart, how to draw R chart and how to observe and how to arrive at the conclusion. So in these two lectures, we discussed about the basics of mean chart and range chart. Don't forget to like the lecture, rather video. And if still any of you have not subscribed my channel, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel P R A S H A N T P U W A R. Also suggest my lectures, my channel to your juniors, seniors, your classmates, your friends, etc. That's it. Thank you very much.